tonight, smartphones and tablets, the new toys for our tech-savvy toddlers. I'm starting to notice that she will go into the zone and kind of blank me out and not do as she's told when I say enough's enough. But is exposure to technology at such a young age affecting the way our children behave and develop? If we give information technology to small kids, they will become addicted, their brains won't develop properly. Giving a tablet to a small kid, in my view, is almost a criminal act. Good evening and welcome to the Tonight programme. Children are using technology at a younger and younger age. By the time they start school, 70% are already confident using a laptop, tablet or smartphone. But while these devices can be useful learning tools, there's also growing concern about the impact they're having on the way our children behave and interact. In tonight's programme, Jonathan Maitland asks whether toddlers are too young for technology. How Christmas has changed. Once, presents like smartphones and tablets were destined mostly for adults. Then children wanted them. But now more and more kids are using these things even before they reach school age, sometimes before they can walk. So is it good they're prepared for our high-tech world or is it too much too young? About 80% of a child's brain growth will occur between birth and the time they're three years old. And the things that they experience or don't experience because they spent too many hours looking at screens may affect that brain development. So there are concerns about how much of their time is spent at a very young age looking at recreational screen media. The concern in the US is such that one of their leading child health organizations, the American Academy of Pediatrics, has actually advised that children under the age of two should be discouraged from using technology which is slightly worrying for those of us with small children, like me, because ever since he was one, my little boy Manny has had a keen interest in my smartphone. We tried to limit his access to it, but even so, now, at nearly three, he's very adept on it. To be honest, it's often quite helpful. At lunchtimes, for example, he's capable of causing havoc, but with Mummy's phone, he's quite content. You, should, you make a decision, you, you decide whether you want to go out and have a peaceful lunch. And the easiest thing is to give him something that's going to distract him for about half an hour, 40 minutes. But the interesting part is always when it's time to stop. Manny. Come to the end of Charlie that's, and that's a, no, that's a no, that's a no. There we go, there well we go, there we go. Well done, Manny, well done. Well done. Get, get, it home to daddy, get it to Daddy, get it to Daddy. Well done. Sweetheart. Well done. Well done. That, that actually is a result. That's good. We've been training him to not go bonkers, and with a combination of uh, cajoling and distracting, i.e., Formula One motor car, um, there hasn't been a, an outburst. But it's still in the balance. It's still. The Manny's love of these gadgets does worry us a bit. His tantrums, for example, when we try and prize the things off him. But then again, do the benefits outweigh the concerns? Because, after all, when he plays on our tablet, he is learning. Now, this, to me, is incredibly beneficial. It's uh, a little game, an interactive game, designed to help his memory. Uh, he kind of identifies numbers and letters using different fruits, and it's great. Uh, but the question is, is it in any way harmful? Before we answer that, let's look at the numbers. A specially commissioned tonight's survey of 2,000 parents of kids under the age of three were asked about their technology habits. 40% said their child uses a tablet or smartphone at home, and 17% said their child had their own device. These are children under the age of three, remember. Now, while there may be some benefit in letting children as young as Manny use these devices, more and more experts are expressing reservations. 
children, particularly under the age of three, may not be old enough to benefit from high amounts of screen media. Even though some of it may be educational, their brains may not be ready to handle it yet. And certainly children under two are probably too young to be giving them their own devices. But aside from that, of course, it may be preventing children from actually interacting with other children and learning how to behave through practice. So does technology change the way children behave? We decided to find out with our own little experiment and asked psychologist Angela Matanda to help. We're looking at how kids between the ages of three and six interact with traditional toys versus technology. So I really want to look at what real children do versus the research that's out there and look at whether this is something we should really be concerned about. So, meet our tonight tots. A lively bunch ranging from three to six years old, all looking forward to an afternoon of fun. First though, let's hear about their technology habits. Mason, from the minute that he'll get up, wears my phone. Um, he can download apps on that straight away. I learned not to give him my password now, because I did have a 27 pound iTunes bill. When Oscar plays with uh, technology and specifically, the laptop, he does get engrossed in it and goes into his own little world, but we do find that when we have to take him off it, that it's a struggle and he does become fractious. Abby's learned a lot from the, um, the apps and the things that she's been playing on. I mean, it's helped her with her writing, for example, but also I'm starting to notice that she will go into the zone and, and kind of blank me out and not do as she's told when I say enough's enough. But where does this leave good old-fashioned toys? Well, let's see. In part one of our experiment, we put our kids' parents in a side room where they can monitor the action. Bring on the children. Hey, the oh, it's a stampede. <laughs> this is the human zoo <laughs> made real, isn't it? It is. It's fascinating. I Proud father over here. Good old Oscar. Everyone else is playing nicely or playing together, playing oh. quietly. There we go, we've ripped her. <laughs> you can see that the children overall are pretty happy in each other's company. Yeah. So obviously they're used to play with other children outside of yeah. this environment and they like the toys. But not everyone liked the toys. Oh, I beg your pardon? Oh. You want to go and get your iPad? No, don't you want to play? But don't you want to play with the nice toys? The toys certainly kept most of the kids occupied, apart from one little person who'd simply had enough. It wasn't long before a tablet found its way into the toy zone. Look, she stopped interacting with the toys and the other children. She's gone. We've lost her. She couldn't bear life without technology. Right, now part two of the experiment. What'll happen when we let them loose in our tech zone and a selection of devices that they're all pretty familiar with? Bring on the kids. They know what they want. That's interesting, isn't it? We've got six little techie addicts <laughs> and Mason, who isn't... Wants to play with something tangible. Yeah. Brilliant. Look what he's doing. It's interesting, before there was, like, it was a party going on and there was interaction. Now there's seven individual parties going on and it's like the, the doors have shut around yes. each of them. The sort of interaction, the cooperation, the sharing, and I'm in my world, leave me alone. But the thing is about human beings, we, we like human interaction, we are social beings, we, we look for the connection and the bonding. Mm. And I think for some children, they emotionally bond with the tablet, it makes them feel secure. And they're not learning the signs of human interaction, yeah. like reading the signs in someone's eyes that says shush or, exactly. or hello well, or they're not, carry on They're or not stop. observing body language, they're not looking, there's no voice intonation, no one's speaking. 
We do know that children have to have regular face-to-face -face contact, preferably with people they know, like their parents and their teachers and their siblings, in order to pick up the social skills that are vital for them being successful during their lives. This isn't something that just happens. It's something that happens by regular practice. And if many hours a day are being displaced by looking at screens passively, um, these skills may not develop as fully. So a big difference, and stand by for an even starker comparison later on in the final part of our experiment. But the concerns aren't just about social interaction. A neuroscientist from Ulm in Germany who studied the effects of technology on young children believes that touchscreen devices can have an effect on the development of young brains. Giving a tablet to a small kid, in my view, is almost a criminal act. It's like um, giving alcohol just to, to make sure you, it gets calm and quiet. They did this in the Middle Ages and they thought it was a great idea to give alcohol to their kids. Now we know that hinders brain development. In my view, the same thing with information technology. If we give information technology to small kids, they will become addicted, their brains won't, won't develop properly. Same thing as we have with alcohol, probably a bit worse. The professor's book Digital Dementia argues that these devices stop young brains from being exercised properly. It's a bit like your child always using a calculator for their times table rather than working it out for themselves. The relevant muscle, as it were, simply isn't being used. Our brain has 100 billion neurons and they communicate with each other and thereby shaping the connections between them. So it's when they are used, they grow. When they are not used, they get thrown out. So my brain gets better and better and better, particularly when I'm a young person. So it really gets the training it needs in the first two decades of life to really become a, a good brain, a brain that's educated and well built. And if that doesn't happen and digital media prevent that from happening, and you have a less educated brain and then it goes down the tubes much faster when it deteriorates at old age. That's the main argument. But crucially, nothing's been proved. There may have been studies, but because this technology is so new, there's no concrete long-term scientific evidence that these devices affect our kids' brains. Yeah! So all we have for now are shorter-term experiments like ours. Now, earlier we saw the vivid difference in our kids' behaviour and interaction when playing with traditional toys and then technological ones. But what happens when they're given a choice? OK, kids, you can play with the toys if you like. You've got a choice. Wow. Which you're not exercising <laughs> at the moment. Uh, well... I guess it's a little bit sad, isn't it, that all the lovely furry toys and... Balloons and prams are just going ignored. But it also suggests that from their point of view, they are getting more from screen time than they feel they would get from this. So it's actually what they've been used to. Mm. And I think that the key is, is balance. It's not traditional toys are better than technology or vice versa. It's a bit of both is good for you, but it's how much. And the fact that all the kids rush to the technology may suggest that they need more of a balance in how they spend their time. Children, if you want to, you can stop having a go on your computers and phones and play with the toys. Yeah. Oscar, do you want to play with some toys? No, thank you. Are you sure? No. Is that, is that a no? No, thank you. All That's right. a very polite... Well, at least no, you're polite. You. What's your worry? when you look at this scene and you think, what are they, you know, what are our kids going to be like I mean, in 20 years' time or, or 30 years' time? I mean, this is the thing we don't really know at the moment, but if you look at how they are interacting or not interacting, that is the worry, that they become so focused on technology and interacting 
as individuals that they're going to lose that kind of sociability and learning emotional intelligence and learning how to share and give and take, which, is, which are real world skills, which no matter how brilliant technology gets, we will still need those skills. And these kids are still in their formative stage. Mm. They're going to learn that this is the way to communicate and this is the way to be. And my concern is that that's going to be their learning tool about the world when there's a whole real world around them. Get in the shed and keep your mouth shut. Don't rock it, oi! It's for safety. Now, here's some kids who do interact with each other. These young teenagers from Theatre Peckham were first introduced to mobile devices when they were aged eight or nine. But, and this shows how quickly things have changed, that's positively ancient compared to how old their younger siblings were when they caught the tech bug. My little brother is four, he's going to be five soon. And my little, my little sister is three. They can just pick it up, open it up, and then pick what movie they want to watch and open up the apps they want to use. And it's, it's, it's really interesting how they've advanced with everybody else, but really quickly as well. It's kind of like, well, if they've got to this stage, at this age, where are they going to be when they're my age? Does that worry you? Slightly, because then he might lose the values of not using technology and doing things naturally and stuff like that. So it, you, you have to have the balance. But I don't know if where we're heading, we'll have the balance that he needs. Anyone else got <coughs> brothers or sisters who are very oh, young I using I have it? a cousin yeah. who's one and a half and she's using the tablet. Really? Yeah, one and she's, a half? she's like watching her little t kid TV shows or playing the games cause, to keep her quiet because she loves, she loves to moan a lot. So she does that. And then when we, like, if you try to call her or pick her up or anything, she will start crying immediately. So you give her the thing and let her watch it and she'll just be quiet for most of the time. But me, but me. But despite those concerns about the effects of technology on the young, there are some who feel that harnessed correctly, it can be a powerful force for good. Kogan Nursery in Penarth in Wales is one of a small number of preschools which has not only embraced technology, but made it part of the curriculum for their three and four year olds. You are now a junior scientist. Well done, Johnny. The children here use tablets, interactive touchscreens, computers and these funny boxes. When the children scan them with a mobile device, they're linked via the web through to an educational video. What gave you the idea to kind of do this revolutionary thing? Well, we live in the 21st century. Technology is an important part of everyday life. And we just wanted to give children the skills that they need to be able to use IT appropriately. We obviously monitor the amount of usage that each child is given to the technology because we need to make sure that the children have got a balanced curriculum. So similarly, if we saw a child that was only playing in the sand or only painting, we would encourage them to do different aspects. And it's not just the kids. Parents are encouraged to get involved too, via a social media page and an educational video site which they can use from home. What did you think when you first heard that, that Kogan was going all techie? Well, to be honest, I was really surprised when I saw all the iPads when we came to first look around. Um, but I, I think it's absolutely brilliant that they've got technology in the schools. I think this is the education that children need. My son's three and he's here at the moment and um, he can use an iPad better than I can. Edward, which button do I have to press? I definitely think that they, they benefit from using it as part of the curriculum. When um, my son wrote his name correctly in the sand on Tenby Beach for the first time with the letter E the right way round, I was able to take a photo and tweet it to nursery and then that success was celebrated in school. I think there are tremendous benefits um, for young children if they're used to using devices um, and if they've, used, they've been lucky enough to use them at, um, at, at nursery school then obviously they know exactly what to do with them and it enhances their numeracy and their literacy skills. When you go into a nursery school you still see books it's not that they're replacing books it's just another form of educating and explaining the world to them in our tonight's survey almost half the parents said they felt it was important that their child was familiar with technology before reaching school age but are we as parents overestimating the skills and intelligence required to use a touchscreen device oh I, I, I myself heard a mother's talk, look, hey professor, my, my son is going to become an Einstein. But a child who just swipes over a featureless surface doesn't learn anything. Your hand is a complex sensory organ. But swiping is, well, 
always the same thing. You don't connect different mo motions with different connotations, objects, etc. And the sensory feedback is always the same and, and, and even worse, it's zero because the, there's this featureless surface. If you just do this, it's the dumbest thing you can do with your hand. But now, with an average of six screens in every household in the UK and technology embedded in most homes, the argument is not whether we should have it, but rather how much of it we should have. And that includes accessories. This, by the way, is an eye potty. Take bedtime, for example. There's growing concern that too much technology disrupts sleep. And researchers in Canada have found that just an hour's lost kip can seriously hamper a child's performance at school. Now, what we do know is that as the sun goes down and it becomes darker, our brains produce a sleep hormone called melatonin. When children have their technology taken away from them, some studies have shown that they produce more melatonin. So it could be that a lot of light that children look at through their screens every night is preventing the right level of melatonin from being produced and they don't fall asleep as easily. So it seems to be about striking the right balance. And that is where Project Wild comes in. It's a national campaign to reconnect children with nature, swapping screen time for wild time, even if they live in the middle of a busy city. This project is in East Dulwich in London. There's been uh, various bits of research published this summer saying that one in five children in the UK are disengaged from nature. So it's really acknowledging how vital it is and important for children to be outside, getting healthy physically, mentally and emotionally, it benefits them, and acknowledging that screen time has its place, but we need a balance. As well as pond dipping, searching for bugs and getting their hands dirty, today the children are being encouraged to stop and listen to the sounds of nature, as well as those of the city. It's important to go out and explore and to know that out there there are green spaces that you can access without having to get on the train, without having to get on the bus, just stepping out your door, exploring and finding that they're there. If you had a choice of spending this afternoon doing this and being outdoors or sitting in front of a tablet, in front of a computer and being inside, what would you prefer to do? So let's start in the middle. Yeah. I, I would have had, I had more fun being outside because I had more experience. OK. I liked being outside because you got to do lots of fun things like log hunting and do it, catching loads of creatures. I definitely should be outside because one, I like to get muddy and two, I just like to be outside. But what's the advice for parents worried that they haven't found the right balance between screen time and non-screen time? Parents can have different rules. All parents watching now can have different rules. But I would strongly suggest that parents have a chat and have some rules. Because if you don't have rules, there's a multi-billion pound industry out there of devices and apps that will have rules for your kids. And they may not be the ones that you like. So your rules can differ from the neighbors. That's fine. Um, but you have to have some thought, some conscious thought about when you want to give your kids devices, what age, what they watch, and how many hours a day they spend doing that. I don't think we need to be so worried that we actually literally ban all children from using these devices. In fact, there's a very strong argument to say that um, they should be using the devices because uh, it, it, it is the future, it's their life. When they, get, um, when they get to school, when they get to work, they, they're going to be needing and using these. So, as always, it's a balanced view that one has to take, I think. It's tricky, this issue, because, as we said, there are no long-term definitive studies. Further research is certainly needed. In the meantime, we can only try to get that balance right. For us, that means a tech-free bedtime, which, fortunately, seems to work. Manny may love a tablet, but he loves story time with Mummy even more. You're very kind, she said. The Royal College of Paediatrics and Child Health recommends preschool children spend no more than two hours a day watching TV or using digital devices. Now, if you'd like more information on tonight's programme, please visit our website at itv.com slash tonight. In the meantime, though, good evening and thanks for watching. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned, but is charity going too far? Emmerdale coming up next.
While over on ITV4 next, more live football. Swansea City entertains Spanish side Valencia in a vital Europa League clash.